What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the Matrix, scoping out the crypto oceans, if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, as of late, there has been a lot of talks in the Casper community about oracles, with Casper originator Jonathan Sampolinski doing a presentation at the tokenized LDN 2025, touching on this matter. Now, what I like about Casper is that the talk for such developments is backed up with actual Action. Recently, the guys of the Cascat team returned to the XXIM podcast to do a session with Ankit demoing its revolutionary V1 Oracle for Caspa. Stay tuned, Crypto Crew. Time to find out. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Keep your Casper coins and crypto investments safe through self-custody. In our opinion, your best option is the Tangem Wallet. And for a limited time, if you buy a Tangem Wallet, you can get 50% off your second till December 22nd, 2025. So check out the link in the description box below. Thanks so much for your consideration and support in advance. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. We are going to support a limited uh, list of assets at the beginning because we want to make sure that we have enough liquidity supporting those assets to reduce the risk of liquidation. This is super important when you launch a lending. So we will have obviously uh, the bridge version of Casper on Igra, which is ICAS. So this is the golden pass. You have Caspar in your wallet or you want to buy Caspar. You can just buy more Caspar, bridge it uh, using the can canonical bridge on Igra. Then you receive ICAS, and from there, you can uh, plug your wallet to Cascade, and then you can open a supply position with your ICAS, and then borrow against your ICAS, uh, borrow some stable coins. But we will also support some bridge version of uh, assets uh, like BTC or uh, wrapped uh, Ethereum when those are ready. So basically, you are looking into this list of assets, ICAS, IGRA token, as well Cascade. We will also allow people to borrow against the, the Cascade and a stable coins as well. So this is the first time I'm hearing stables on IGRA. Even you guys are going to be building on IGRA exclusively, right? We are starting to launch on IGRA, but that doesn't mean ultimately that we are going to, to exclusively build on IGRA. Maybe we'll open to other chain. But uh, right now, the, the idea is to support uh, decentralization uh, and uh, programmability on Casper. And as for stable coins, what I can share is we are already in, t in discussion with two stable coins providers. One is coming from this team named Igraway. I don't know if you've heard about it. Uh, so it's for the USDE asset. And another is this team called M0. And we are also in a discussion with Casper.com and Igra. And we are trying to discuss how we can uh, make this happen. But we want to onboard uh, as much as a stable coin liquidity uh, as we want. Let's say that I want to supply more USDC, for example. So I click supply. I'm going to put 500k, 5000k, sorry. I'm going to hit supply, confirm. And you can see that my health factor has changed. My total collateral has changed. My debt is the same because I haven't borrowed more against it. So let's borrow against it. Let's borrow, let's say, 2.5k. And now you can see that my health factor has uh, reduced drastically. I'm still healthy, but I'm seeing that I have 10,000 worth of collateral and uh, 3,000 worth of debt. So I can still monitor how much uh, I'm able to repay, adjust. And you can see the, the LTVs that are uh, allowed uh, for each pool. So the health factor is a factor that represents how much debt you have out of uh, the collateral uh, you have supplied. So how healthy your position is before it gets liquidated. And the closer you get to one, the likelihood of getting liquidated uh, uh, increases, right? So you want to stay above a health factor of one and you want to be able to repay lo your loan as your debt accrues. Obviously, you want to stay healthy. This is why having a um, liquid market is super important for lending because you don't want your asset to be super volatile after a few thousand worth of uh, volume of trades in, in the high or in the lows. And you also want to rely on a good Oracle solution because you want the Oracle solution to be able to fetch the, the correct fair prices of all the assets that you are supporting on the platform. Yeah. We have this simulator, for example, that shows that as a platform, 
we uh, generate some revenues because we are taking a bit of fees between the borrowing interest and the flash loans and the liquidation, which means that we are making money as a business, which is important and normal. But we have a system that is going to redistribute all the fees between the DAO treasury, which is under the governance of the voters, so the cascade users, and the operal uh, operational treasury that is managed by the team. When we make some revenue as a platform coming from the liquidations, they are actually flowing back, majority of them are flowing back to the treasury for the benefits of the, the active users. So they can decide how to reallocate those fees and they can decide how to pay back the supply of the cascade token on the market. They can also decide how to use those fees to fund the, the Caspa core uh, dev fund wallet to uh, boost research and development. They can also uh, use those fees to reallocate to TVR participants to increase liquidity incentivization. So liquidation is reused in Cascade and not just extracted. Look at that. Look at that. I like it. This is Cascade's Oracle solution. We can see here the, the actual fair price with the best bid and best ask. Here we can see so the price by source. The price provided by each exchange. By bid is a little bit lower than the the rest sometimes crack a little bit higher we can see here the spread evolution i think for some context on the um, first graph where you see the best bid and best ask this is not the best bid and best ask across all exchanges the way we calculate the fair value is at a given time t you basically freeze everything gather all data you can and then obviously there's going to be arbitrage opportunities between exchanges, you simulate as if you could instantaneously fill all those arbitrage. And what you're left with is basically some global order book or condensed order book. And there you have the best bid and best ask. So it's only the best bid and best ask if you simulated all overlapping trades that exist, which obviously would take some time, but that that's just a representation of what is the fair value and what is the best bid and best ask if all orders were to trade on a single venue. The best example so that people can understand is what happened to Binance on the 10th of October. When you're looking at the health factor of a loan, you need to determine the point at which you start liquidating the loan. For Binance, when they looked at their USD E, I believe. I don't remember exactly what USD it's called. E Tina. Yes, correct. They only looked at the spot price on Binance, which is just a fraction of the whole market. Instead of having to manipulate the whole market, because market manipulation is allowed, you only have to manipulate a fraction. So the liquidity needed to destroy and to start all these liquidations is negligible relative to what it would have cost you to, to do it on the whole market. And that's the problem when you don't look at the global price and you only look at yeah, a small liquidity pool or, or only a, a fraction of what the price is trading at. So in this specific example with Binance, they were just looking at their own price for USDE asset. They weren't looking at the entire marketplace. And in this case, what you're looking at is more of a global price across many different centralized exchanges. It's basically trying to say what would be the fair value if everything were traded on a single order. Right. And this is similar to Chainlink. Chainlink will pull the data from different venues as well. I'm assuming you're actually pulling directly from the exchanges yourself. TEEs is another aspect. We can talk about that after yeah. about decentralization. But right now, we're just listening to the web sockets of different exchanges. Yeah. So it's a centralized solution for now. That's all you need for now. So there's two aspects of what it means to decentralize this solution. The first one is how can someone trust that? The data we pulled is actually from Mexi, Bitget. Like they shouldn't trust us. That's where you use a TEE, which prevents us from saying, oh, okay, we pulled from Mexi that the price of Casper is one cent and just straight out lying. That's the first aspect of decentralization, which we will implement because it's necessary for to not have a centralized solution. The second one, which I haven't thought about as much, once we've aggregated everything, there shouldn't just be one server that's pushing this information on chain. We should have mm. ideally uh, several servers that all calculate the price and then they can push it together. The fundamental difference with Chainlink is here, we know exactly what we're calculating. I have an algorithm that determines the fair value. Chainlink just tells all its nodes, okay, fetch us some price, but it doesn't know where the price has been fetched from. It doesn't know how it's been calculated. If I tell node A to go get a price, he can give me just the Binance price. 
node B is going to give me a, a median of Binance and Coinbase. At the end of the day, I don't know. So it's just taking a median of median of median of median. And at the end of the day, sure, it's robust, but it's not precise at all. Here, I have an idea of exactly what precision is. And then the question is, how do I make it robust and decentralized? Decentralized aspect, in my opinion, is pretty easy. Robust is another topic. Crypto crew, when Casper started to make noise on the crypto ocean, people needed a narrative to describe or help understand Casper better. However, at the making of this recording at the end of 2025, its tech proves Casper isn't just in one narrative. This goes to show Casper isn't just revolutionary, it also is evolutionary. Shout out to the Cascat team, shout out to Ankit and the XXAM podcast. I'm trying to hook you up, man. I'm on your side, man. Now, before we go, if you're looking for a pro Casper friendly exchange with tight security, even through the historic October 2025 crash and no KYC requirements, Blowfin could be a perfect fit for you. Take advantage of 0% fees on limit orders and 50% off market order fees during free spot December. This event ends December 31st. So don't miss out and check out the link in the description box below. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix show mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.